Okay, Eurocons video on Saturday, the 22nd of February 2020. It has just gone 8.52 p.m. Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. Hope you had a good week's trading. This quick video is just going to be showing you what's happening on the Apple chart, AAPL, and the major indices. I think we've got a great example on the Apple chart of professional buying low and selling high, so I want to show you that first. Um, this is the usual setup with the charts kind of side by side, AAPL daily chart. On the right hand side, we've got all the indicators to do with price, so this is better sine wave, and they show me the uh, cyclical and trending activity in price. We've got up trends and strength shown in red and downtrends and weakness shown in white and below the price bars uh, this is better sine wave fast and slow lines on a couple of different time frames showing us where the cyclical turns are happening and those support and resistance lines are printed on the price bars themselves over here. Uh, on the left hand side we've got everything to do with volume. Uh, so we've got first of all Better Pro Am. Better Pro Am is based on average trade size and it shows professional activity with blue bars and amateur activity with yellow bars. And then the volume momentum calculation which is better momentum here and that shows uh, exhaustion patterns with these bl big blue dots and then bearish divergence uh, with white dots, bullish divergence with uh, red dots. And then confirmed uptrends are shown with this background color in red, confirmed downtrends are in grey. So that's the usual chart setup. No different than uh, you know trading e-mini kind of intraday or anything like crude on a daily chart and so on. Exactly the same indicators, exactly the same settings. Nothing's optimized for different markets or different time frames. Exactly the same settings on everything. So this is professional buying and professional selling. So remember professionals buy at lows and sell at highs and you can see the professionals are active here uh, back at the beginning of 2019 buying it at 150 bucks all these blue professional bars on the lows and in the last couple of weeks we've seen blue professional bars at the highs here up at 320 and then we've got exhaustion selling at this point here so this is panic out uh, at this point so you get panic selling high uh, volume momentum on the downside. A bullish divergence kind of comes in. That means there's less selling pressure and we're likely to bottom and the professionals are buying at that kind of panic point. And then over the last couple of weeks, we've had this euphoric kind of period with Apple kind of hitting 300, 320. Exhaustion buying patterns here and then the first bearish divergence a couple of days ago showing that there's less kind of buying pressure kind of going on. So uh, buying low and selling high here. But Remember, the professionals are always a little bit early. You know, they need to have resting buy orders kind of as the price kind of moves down. They know the levels at which they're interested in getting in. So they're kind of getting in as the price kind of moves down before it actually uh, bottoms. And then they're also kind of getting out at the highs. They've got resting kind of uh, sell orders uh, at these highs. They're taking profits. We could easily kind of go above these spike highs. Uh, but at that point, they're saying, I've made good money. I was in at 150. I'm out at 320. So that's kind of been good. The uh, reason why I'm saying this still has you know time to run in terms of the trending activity is because of the better sine wave patterns here. And you can see here we're still in uptrends on all three time frames. I always talk about um, you know triples uh, being really important. When you see three trend line uh, three kind of support and resistance lines all kind of come together here on uh, Apple, big things happen at triples. We either had big reversals or big trend breaks, and that's exactly what we had here at 200 bucks here all three time frames kind of came along they were actually coming along here resistance lining up all three time frames but look you know in terms of the trending activity and the uh, red bars that's showing strength and uptrends and so there was no reason to short at that point we had an exhaustion buying and bearish divergence to turn us around there what we were doing is we were lining up for a big move and what we've done is we've broken above all those time frames into trending moves so we have to go pull back to end of trend on the lowest time frame we then have to put in a pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame and we'll probably have to put in a pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame so in terms of you know when this trend is is over and it reverses into a downtrend you know that's yet to be seen because we haven't seen any of those patterns happen yet all i'm saying is the professionals have started to take profits at this point they were in here at this low they're kind of starting to get out here and they could leg out. I mean, we could keep on going above 320 and we could uh, see more blue professional bars at higher levels. But just, you know, note that we've reached exhaustion in terms of uh, buying pressure. 
you know, we've maxed out here, we've had a bearish divergence pattern, it's just going to slow down, and we're likely to go into a more of a kind of congestion phase here in Apple than anything else kind of going forward. So it was a good example of professionals kind of buying low uh, and uh, selling high. What are the indices showing us? If that's Apple, obviously a very important kind of component, we've got a similar thing happening on uh, the NASDAQ chart. Uh, because uh, we bottomed out at the beginning of uh, 2019 here with blue professional bars, exhaustion sell going on here. We had uh, some ra weakness with Rambo patterns here, so the amateurs were driving the move at this point here, and we just fell off. We often have some weakness after Rambo patterns, but then we don't see um, blue professional bars coming in until this point here, and then we've kind of poked above it. So again, kind of legging out at various points as the market kind of uh, moves up. We could easily see some more blue professional bars over the coming you know days and weeks, but that was the first kind of sign that they were starting to take some profits up here in the 9,000s. And we've had exhaustion buy, and bearish divergence kind of come in here. So the NASDAQ chart, not unlike the Apple chart, uh, showing us um, that you know the professionals are starting to uh, take profits and we're starting to lose some momentum. But again, on a better sine wave, we're above all three time frames. You actually can't see the uh, SR1 uh, level uh, kind of here is almost exactly uh, underneath the SR3 level support resistance, uh, lowest time frame and the highest time frame. So that's kind of sitting underneath here. There's the intermediate time frame there. And again, exactly the same thing. We've not seen pullback to end of trend on the low, intermediate or high time frame. So all I'm saying is we're going to lose momentum a little bit and maybe just go through a consolidation phase. It's not over until we see those pullback to end of trend kind of signals kind of coming in. But you know, the uh, NASDAQ chart, not unlike the Apple chart. Uh, and then as we go through the indices, they're kind of a little bit weaker and weaker as, you know, uh, the market's been driven so heavily by the tech sector this time around. And so the NASDAQ's the strongest chart of the lot. The next one is uh, the S&P 500. This one, we've had the first little sign here, pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame gone in with an exhaustion buy and a bearish divergence signal here. And no blue professional bars uh, come in here, but we definitely had the blue professional bars and the panic selling here with exhaustion on better momentum at the beginning of 2019, kind of there. So uh, blue professional bars aren't in at that point, but we do have uh, an end of trend signal on uh, S&P 500. Dow. Dow, we do have some blue professional bars. We had some uh, coming into the uh, beginning of the year, and we've had a couple kind of coming into these highs. And again, exhaustion buying, bearish divergence kind of coming in, and the second little end of trend on the lowest time frame. So again, we've still got to put in pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame before this is all over. But uh, there's the exhaustion sell, the blue professional bars kind of coming in at the lows there with the panic selling, and then we've set off to the upside. Uh, on the Dow. And then lastly, the Russell. The Russell's been the weakest of the lot. We really haven't uh, made any headway on the Russell because we haven't even got through those highs uh, that were put in in, in uh, kind of September, October of 2018 uh, with Rambo patterns that topped us out there. But there's the exhaustion sell on the way down. No blue professional bars, no kind of panic buying. I mean, there's not been very much interest in uh, the Russell uh, kind of going forward. But on this chart, you know, you can see on the better sine wave that a whole bunch of things are starting to line up. So when you get pullback to end of trend uh, on the lowest time frame, syncing up with cyclical resistance on the highest time frame, that's an area where we're just starting to lose, lose it. We'll have to put in a pullback, well, a support to resistance play on uh, the intermediate time frame, but that support resistance, uh, support level could easily come in below the resistance level here with a pattern like this where it's all kind of starting to lose its uh, momentum on the upside here. We don't necessarily see a pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. We'll wait and see. But again, on all of these charts, we're still showing uptrends and not weakness on the indices. All I'm suggesting is that on these uh, particular time frames, we can start to see some initial profit taking by professionals. I think that Apple chart is kind of apropos for you know, an example of, of what's going on there. So there we go. Uh, make of that what you will. Um, I've kind of burnt my fingers uh, too many times in uh, previous uh, years trying to call tops or anything like that. All I'm saying is the market needs to breathe in, breathe out, and uh, we could just be due for a little bit of consolidation, uh, having had, you know, a tremendous run up and uh, momentum kind of going this way. So let's see what happens uh, in the next uh, kind of days and weeks.